talking about what's the reason that you want to make a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, claim? Why do you want to do this? What is it? Is there? Everybody has to have a reason to do something, right? There's nothing that's done that has no rhyme or reason. Everything has a reason. You can always identify a reason. And so this is the same thing for people who want to learn this. You have to have a reason to learn it because if you don't, you're probably not going to be learning it. Why would you? Unless you had a reason to do so. You have to have the motivation. The gal, you know, you have to be galvanized to do it. What's the reason? Why do you want to learn it? Why do you want to create a document contract postal vessel court venue? So first you have to have a reason to do so. Now there are lots of documents you can create once you know this grammar, because of course, that's the first step. You have to know the grammar. You have to have closure on the grammar so that you can give closure to every single thing that's on your contract that you're creating. You have to be able to give closure. If you don't have a physical dictionary and styles manual concordance to go with your document contract post vessel court venue, you better have it here and you better give a, a venue for closure in your document. Otherwise, it's just like a fiction document. In the fiction, they don't give any closure. Most times. So what's the reason you're creating this? Are you creating a live life claim, which is a document contract post to vessel court venue? Or are you creating a claim of damage, a claim of trespass, of harm? Most people, when they come into this, that's the thing that they're looking at. They want to stop some sort of trespass. That's their volition. They're tired of being bilked. They're tired of being taken advantage of and coerced into doing things. So learning correct sentence structure is definitely a very powerful, potent tool in order to stop these trespasses. One thing it will not do, from my firsthand knowledge and experience, correct sentence structure will not force someone else to do anything against their will. Because if you're trying to do that, then it's no better than the fiction. Because that's what the fiction does. The fiction tries to force you and coerce you into doing things. And with the principles of correct sentence structure that I teach, rule one, rule equal, honor, grace, peace, neutrality, that doesn't figure into it at all. Because what will probably end up happening is nothing. Nothing will happen, number one. And number two, it may blow up in your face and uh, you and those around you might be harmed from it rather than the person that you were trying to get the force to do something, if that makes sense. So the first step is to know the grammar, have closure on that, have closure on what it is you're doing at the very least, or find someone, if you can, who does have closure on the grammar and is willing to take authority over your construct to sort of act as like a power of attorney or something like that. Theoretically, if I did such things, you can say, hey, Jason, you know, um, uh, I'll give you one troy ounce of gold per hour if you take on this case. Uh, I grant you authority over the case and, and the documents. And then, uh, and then I would do, I would, be performing on your behalf but good luck in finding someone like that and that's a completely different scenario but i have to put that in there for full closure this is geared toward those who want to do it themselves which i highly recommend so you got to know the grammar and you got to have a reason so let's say the reason is you're trying to stop a trespass okay now you got to think about where do claims come from where does it come from? The way Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller used to teach it, claims come from knowledge. For the claim, it's knowledge of the facts. That's the way he taught it. Knowledge 
can be argued. Your knowledge can be incorrect. Therefore, let's go a little bit deeper. Where does that knowledge come from? Where does the claimant's knowledge of the fact come from? Where does that originate from? What's the source? With my cognition, the knowledge comes from the senses, the five or more senses. Some people say 33 senses, some people say more. Our port of sensation, sight, smell, taste, touch, hearing, et cetera, et cetera. That's our port of sensation. Data comes in through these ports and docks and moors, and then we can take that data cognize it and then formulate knowledge and ship it out, transship it out as claims. That's where the knowledge comes from. It comes from your senses, your sensations. For this claimant's cognition of the sensation is with this correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, claim of the facts with the knowledge by the claimant, period. I just told you where my knowledge comes from. It comes from my cognition of my sensations. And I have to say, um, as a side note, I feel like this is why the word sense and sensation is not in any edition of Black's Law Dictionary. Because if they, and again, this is speculation, if they would allow that into those foreign vessels in dry dock, there can be no argument about sensation. As I'm fond of saying, if I spill this hot coffee on my arm and I say, ow, that hurts, you can't really tell me, no, it doesn't hurt, Jason, because you're not me and you're not sensing it. You have no firsthand knowledge of what I'm doing. You only have a memory of an association of what it might feel like to you. And then you can probably certify and say, you know what? Hot coffee does burn and it does cause pain. So yes, you know, it does hurt. But they won't, you know, don't really let that into a courtroom because it can't be argued. But what can be argued is knowledge and they do it all the time. They argue it so much that they insist on you hiring arguers for you. So because you're not smart enough to argue yourself within that construct. But that's neither here nor there. We're talking about how to create a correct sen uh, successful correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, document, the psychology thereof. So what have we established? We have to know the grammar. We have to have a reason. Now, those two things in place, if you're going to create a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal, vessel, court, venue, you must have a correct claim of the live life. You must have a correct claim of the live life. You must have a correct claim of the live life. Otherwise, your claim may not do what you think it's going to do. I'm not saying it won't work if you don't have a claim to the live life. What I'm saying is in order for it to work and be successful with it from my firsthand knowledge, you must have a claim to the live life. What is a claim of the live life? A claim of the live life is a correct sentence, structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal, vessel, court, venue, in which three live life claimants autograph the document and certify that you are a living, breathing creature, live life creature. They witness that you are indeed with the life. Life pertains to breathing. Usually if there's no breath, there's no life. If there's no oxygen, there's no life. As far as we are concerned as, as men and women. So those three things, closure on the grammar, a reason, and a live life claim. Once you have that base, now you can move on to the particulars of how these things work. But that is the basis of the psychology of how it would work. Um, you must also have knowledge of the flag mechanics. Does your flag have a constitution? 
If you're going to mail out a document that has a flag on it, do you even know what the flag is for? Do you know the dimensions of the flag? Do you have a constitution for that flag? Can you produce it if you need to? Do you have it on hand? Because if you don't, I would caution you uh, to maybe hold back before you create one of these things because you have to have closure on every single thing that's on the document. Every single thing, including the flag and the stamp. Okay? So if you don't have a constitution for your Title IV 1 by 1.9 flag, maybe you better might consider doing so okay so you have to have closure just you know basically you have to know what you're doing is what i'm telling you psychologically you have to know what you're doing if you go into something knowing what you're doing and you have confidence in it you're going to be successful with it right you have more of a chance of being successful than you if you walk into it not knowing what you're doing. If you were going to, let's say you, you your dream was to be a boxer, would you just jump in the ring without training or learning any of the techniques or footwork or head movement or anything? Would you step in there without even doing any road work, without running to get in shape? Would you just step in there and just, well, We'll see what happens. I mean, if you would, I mean, kudos to you. But it takes time. It takes study. It takes practice. It takes time on the water, so to speak. You have to, you know, there's a lot of focused studying to do this stuff. And what I'm telling you is exactly what is in the topic of this, of this stream. That you have to have closure on what it is you're doing psychologically. You have to have closure on the grammar. You have to have a live life claim. You have to have a reason for doing what you're doing. You have to have closure on the flag and be able to produce that closure if called upon to do so. You have to know how the uh, postage stamps work, the fee for freight, what that means. Also, you have to have a, a knowledge of drogue timelines. I myself have uh, the most common ones that I use actually printed on the back of my CPAS C tree. And there's like three, three or four of them on there. There are lots of different ones that you can look up um, through Google. There's a wonderful resource. People don't realize that, but you can learn a lot about drugs and timelines from to your document. Now, the next thing you would have to do, if it is a damage claim, um, a claim of trespass, you would have to have knowledge of 12B7 through 12B1, summary corrections of the rules of civil procedure. Now, people would be like, well, what's he talking about? Well, fortunately for you, if you go to my Weebly site, which is if you go to the main page of this YouTube channel and you look at the banner and you look at the starboard side lower corner, you will find a link to my Weebly site. And if you go to the blog section there, you will find 12B7 through 12B1 written out in correct sentence structure on there, explaining what that is. You have to have closure on that. I've also done a podcast on it for the Quantum Grammar Shoot over on Anchor, if you want to go over there and look at it. But I'm not here to cause shipwrecks. I'm here for the people who are serious who want to learn this and follow through with it and be safe. That's the first uh, rule is to be safe. So that's about, uh, that's about it. That's the psychology of how you create one of these claims. You got to have knowledge of the grammar. You have to be able to convey it very clearly and explain it to another contract party. You have to. Otherwise, how are you gonna how are you gonna convey? How is anybody gonna understand you if you don't understand it yourself? You understand how important that is. You're not gonna be able to rely on David Wynn Miller. You're not gonna be able to rely on Russell J. Gould. You're not gonna be able to rely on 
Mark Shum Christopher, you're not going to be able to rely on, you know, me or anybody else. It has to be you. You have to have closure on what it is you're doing. That's first and foremost. So you got to know the grammar. Got to have a live life claim. Got to have a reason. Got to have a compre comprehension and complete closure on the flag, constitution, postal mechanics, fee for freight. 12B7 through 12B1. Quo arento. There's all sorts of stuff that goes into the psychology of this. And the most important thing, of course, is volition. If it's your volition to harm someone, then I can predict that this probably will not work out too well for you. If it's your volition to force someone to do something against their will, it's probably not going to work out for you. If it's your volition to stop someone from harming you, if you're being harmed and you need to stop it, I can guarantee that 100% this will work for you if you have closure on those things that I just mentioned. And again, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I implemented the memberships is to give people that I know watch this channel the opportunity to show me that they value what it is that I do here. Instead of us always coming on and, and you know, asking questions and not wanting to do the research yourself and not contributing in any way. This way it's contribute contribution is both ways. I'm contributing this knowledge and then you're contributing a little bit back and I see that. And it tells me about your character and it's another, you know, whole vetting process where I can see who's serious and who isn't. As always, if you want to fast track your learning, you can email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, which is in the description of the video, and apply for a correct grammar workshop. Um, I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation where we can talk about it if you're serious about it and uh, where we can go from there. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel, if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks.